In an emergency, first responders first at risk on the call should their patients be contagious. In the midst of this pandemic, EMS making some changes to stay safe. Channel 5's Kristen Colon found out how they determine if they need to gear up. Whether it's on a chopper or on the ground in an ambulance, COVID-19 has no limits and you can get it anywhere. So for those on the front lines, they need to be even more careful than what they're used to. It all starts with a call. They've been doing CPR for about maybe 15, 20 minutes now. A call that if not handled correctly, it's not just the patient's life at risk. Now, it's the same for EMTs. They are having us look out for patient uh, fever, chills, difficulty breathing or shortness of breath. It's the new screening process for coronavirus. Have you traveled in the last 14 days? If the callers show no signs, difficulty breathing or shortness of breath, then this patch moves on. Obviously, it's not up to us to determine if a patient has it or not. We're just identifying what symptoms they may have so as, as to kind of like prevent the spread of it through, you know, the people we come in contact with. But if the computer test comes back positive, <laughs> medics suit up. As we hear positive, um, we do get a little bit more of an anxiety, but um, we've, uh, throughout the years, we've learned how to control that anxiety and uh, we, we, we kind of deal with it in a positive way. Stephanie Estrada grabs her gloves, goggles, gown, and N95 mask. Protective equipment, EMS says, they have learned not to waste because of national shortages. Well, it is kind of hard for us because we do a lot of uh, patient contact, but uh, we're, we're trying. We're trying to maintain the distance. Distant with her patient, but when it's time to go home... I get a white bee and I go inside grabbing all the white bees and my son can't touch me until I take a shower. So he, he knows. He knows not to touch mommy until mommy gets clean. A risk? She says she has to take. So far, there's been about 50 cases where EMS has had to gear up. Medics say they follow the ever-changing CDC guidelines to sanitize and stay healthy on the ground and in the air. Most likely, they'd be the ones who are on a vent, going from one hospital to another. Or if we have a patient in, the, in a scene flight where the patient gets intubated because they had a respiratory problem, and we fly into the hospital and they have this, the signs and symptoms that they could be COVID positive. Jonathan Alua says the flight ventilator helps when transferring critical coronavirus patients. And like on the ground, the flight crew must also use that same protective gear. We'll keep a track of the patients that screen positive for us and then we'll try to follow up to find out if they actually get tested and whether they are positive or not. And if we do learn that a patient we transport is positive, we will communicate with any of the other responders like fire police who were at that call. For now, Alua says their plans are ready in the case of drastic increase in calls or shortage of supplies. But Alua says it's the unknown that makes him worry. Together, we will overcome it. Uh, we just need to listen to the guidelines, to whatever CDC tells us, and if we need to stay home, stay home. As we have reported, Hidalgo EMS did file for bankruptcy last year to reorganize their finances. Alua says they are in a better position now. He also urges anyone, if you need an ambulance, do not let anything stop you from calling. In McAllen, Christian Colon, Channel 5 News.